Hello and welcome to BharatShakti.in. Now, we've been running this technology series now for some time. We've already covered artificial intelligence. We've also covered 5G. Uh, and these are available on our website should, the, should you want to go through with them. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the unmanned uh, autonomous systems. Now, unmanned autonomous systems have variety, in various varieties. There, is, there are those which fly in the air, there are those on the surface, and there are those which are subsurface, let's say, under the waters of the sea. Uh, we'll restrict ourselves to only the unmanned aerial vehicles today. And to take us through this particular episode, I have a guest with me, and Lefnjal Anil Kapoor. Lefnjal Anil Kapoor retired as the Director General Corps of VME in the Army. And thereafter, he's been a professor of practices in IIT Tirupati. He's also in the technology innovation hub in IIT Tirupati. Welcome, Neil. Morning to you, sir. Thank you very much. Then, if we can start the discussion straight away, uh, my the first thing that I want you to throw your some light upon, and let's keep it a little broad based, and let's get everybody together on the same page. Well, it's about. Uh, the unmanned auto, uh, autonomous system. What is the technical landscape we need today? Yeah, uh, let me start by saying that uh, since we've just come out of the AI series, that is perhaps one of the biggest technology enabler that we have on the table today, and uh, uh, with with immense utility. But close on heels <clears throat> is material science. I think the crux of whatever is happening today hinges around material. Today, you have nanomaterials, which are creating miniaturization in everything that we do. We, we used to talk of microelectronic mechanical systems. Today, we talk of nanoelectronic mechanical systems. So that is, again, a huge enabler. Then we've got carbon, carbon fiber, which has been there for some time. But today, you have carbon reinforced polymers, uh, very light in weight, but very strong. And uh, then you've got uh, these electric motors, the servo motors, which have come up with a huge efficiency. Uh, you, you can make rotors out of carbon and reinforced uh, polymers, foam material, which is again very light. And all these put together is actually bringing in the unmanned autonomous systems. Add to this some high energy materials that are coming up and some uh, green energy materials, if I may say, which actually are allowing uh, high power efficiency to the systems because any system should be small in form, light in weight, and should be able to function with minimum power requirements. So all this with AI, uh, communication technologies, and uh, the uh, free space optics, if I may say, as a means of communication, is actually bringing in a huge technology landscape, which has made UAV a reality today, unmanned systems a huge reality today. And and that is the reason why there, there is a lot of proliferation which has happened over the last decade or so, uh, which actually in times to come is going to go more and more progressive. Uh, right. Uh, Jell, you see drones today are a buzzword and will they also be employed for uh, far too many functions, any function that you can possibly think of, both on the Sydney Street and also in the armed forces, the armed forces one hinge a lot, and Sydney Street, the potential is uh, quite heavy. So, well, but when you go ahead with drones and put it into use in various places, the what are mm -hmm. the challenges that we face and what are the opportunities that we have? Uh, that's a brilliant question, sir. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, today, uh, given the technology landscape, you have a drone, which is of the size of a bumblebee or a butterfly. You have a drone, Black Hornet, which is a palm top UAV made out of pure nanomaterials and nanotechnology, a masterpiece in itself. And then you've got quadcopters, hexacopters, which are the rotary wing variety. You've got mini helicopters. And then you've got fixed wing helicopters and hybrid helicopters which are both rotary and fixed and you go down, go up the ladder to uh, mail and hail the high altitude long endurance the 
uh, uav so today the two or three basic parameters are first is the size and form factor you got the full range the second is the payload carrying capacity you could carry very light payloads like in a bumblebee just a camera and you could carry about 200 kgs which is a air taxi and and the payload capacity is increasing and the third important thing is the endurance the flying time you have from a few minutes maybe 20 30 minutes a very tactical system to endurance going right up to uh, 90 days in some cases which uses solar power so so really speaking the whole spectrum today uh, is a, a bouquet of opportunities now let's look at firstly the opportunities before we looked at the challenges now when we look at the opportunities it's it's a apt example of dual use technology both in the cv street and in the military if we were to look at cv street today we have air taxis which are going to take off in a big way in india as well in times to come then you got air ambulances we all know that today uh, most of the towns and especially metros are choco block on traffic during uh, most of the working hours or, or daylight hours and therefore air ambulance is a big opportunity which is coming up it's already come up globally and coming up in india as well then you've got huge amount of logistics which is being driven by drones uh, various uh, load carrying capacities right from the tactical ones which could supply pizzas in homes uh, through to the mega drones unmanned systems which could actually take off from air strip and carry stuff wherever required logistic stuff wherever required and therefore that is a new landscape which is emerging uh, when we look at it from the military perspective uh, all these technologies are coming in here as well uh, i mean we've always heard of cashback using helicopters you could have cashback now with unmanned systems we all know the winter stocking the monsoon stockings which happen which is a huge load especially in mountains and high altitude again uh, you know we we use we use we use human effort which is finite the number of trips that a mule or a human being could do at various altitude is quite finite whereas here's a unmanned system which can carry your load and do as many trips 24 7 365 it also brings in a new paradigm that today in the military you could actually push in a lot of fresh supplies uh, almost every day in a small window should you have the need and that will improve the quality of life that you look at so really speaking that is one end of the spectrum the other end of the spectrum is uh, we've looked at uh, if we were to look at combat uh, you know we could look at phones i mean 26 january 2021 was a great uh, show and we've had a similar swarm shows happening all through uh, at various functions in the country as well uh, including beating the retreat last year and this year of course it was planned with almost 3500 drones which did not happen because of weather issues but i'm sure um, that swarm is a great operational opportunity which actually could uh, precede any action by troops on ground and therefore you could soften your target you can shape your battlefield you can shape your tactical battle area of interest and then move in with lesser casualties and more combat effectiveness if i may say so really speaking uh, these are some of the examples of opportunities uh, both in the cv street and in the defense now yet another uh, opportunity lies in what is being called today as pseudo satellites or quasi satellites uh, imagine a drone which has a panel solar panel a long solar panel and um, what is recorded in history is that um, history means the recent past trials that have been on that you could actually put it at a altitude uh, which is about 100 to 200 kilometers above and act like a low earth orbit light uh, on demand and the solar panels actually could keep the system on uh, because the power requirements like i said high energy materials are there sorry uh, green energy materials are there which helps you optimize your power needs and uh, get the satellite system going for any real time surveillance that one would be looking at so those are the opportunities on when we come to challenges the challenge biggest challenge lies in terms of making it all weather 
I think that's a huge challenge, uh, especially when you look at quadcopters and smaller ones. Uh, then, miniature size, when you look at a bumblebee or you look at a palm top, the endurance there is rather limited, but the utility is huge. Imagine a bumblebee went and sat uh, very innocuously outside an ops room in, in any area. It could, it could actually relay. Uh, and, and those are also opportunities at the same time threats that one has to be very careful when you sanitize today because these innocuous looking creatures actually could be uh, your uh, sources of information. And uh, the world is moving towards something called the ornithopters, which is like an eagle flying. And um, they, they, uh, they actually uh, look like birds and they fly and they can be given different hues. And they are very sensitive cameras and very sensitive, um, should I say, uh, receivers, which actually sense, depending on your uh, the target intended target could sense and relay information. So, so that is the landscape which is developing, which is something like uh, uh, a boon and a bane. And therefore, uh, today we've started talking about counter drones as much as we talk about drones, because while it is a huge opportunity, it's a huge challenge at the same time. Well, thank you. I think that's a huge canvas mm -hmm. of usage that we've come up with. In fact, like you're talking about logistics, if troops can be supplying fresh uh, food material there on top, and let's say in eastern Ladakh, it would make a lot of difference to the morale. Anyway, when we perhaps discuss drones again more in detail sometime later, but I have another question, and I think it's an interesting one for our viewers. Now, tell us a bit about this Chinese balloon which is flying on top of the United States. They have, of course, shot it down. That's also an uh, you know, unmanned aerial vehicle after all. Right. It's it's a. Uh, I think it's been in the news for some time now, and a lot has been uh, written, and a lot has yet to be written. Uh, let me look at it from a technology perspective first. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, today we talked of some materials. We have these foam-based materials, which actually have a huge inherent strength of expanding. Now we must know that a balloon which goes up actually has either helium or hydrogen because those are light airs which help the balloon rise and perhaps these are the helium balloon uh, with helium filled. But the other thing we have to keep in mind is as the balloon keeps ascending because of the low pressures with altitude, uh, the balloon starts expanding. So there is a finite limit to which a balloon can expand. But today, with advanced materials, with the strength that can be gained in these elastic materials, you've been able to achieve 60,000 uh, feet or more. In fact, it could be more. The other is that today, since you could calibrate your flight trajectory based on MET, uh, you have a huge amount of MET, and with AI-based MET data systems, you could actually plot uh, through software what place the balloon should be at what time, what altitude to be able to get the right push to move in the right direction. After all, what is achieved, what has been achieved is an intercontinental move of a balloon. It's over 10,000 kilometers of travel. So really speaking, I think the altitudes uh, which it has risen to uh, was more a compulsion uh, based on uh, the kind of travel it has to do in addition to maybe uh, some kind of stilts which it gets as the altitude goes up. Now, add to this the purpose of this, which is uh, surveillance, maybe quiet surveillance. So, therefore, you have to have systems uh, which are solar part because, or maybe the wind part system or hybrid part systems so that whatever antennas, whatever receivers and transmitters and transponders you put in that and the cameras are actually supplied for this duration. Uh, we could easily assess that the flying time may have been over a couple of months uh, from wherever it took off and wherever it was shot down. And therefore, how does it sustain for this time without some green energy materials embedded in them? Also, the canvas of the balloon could well be one which is also a green material because it's a huge mass which actually could supply a lot of power. And um, given the wind shifts, it could that could also be used for generating some power. You know, there, there is a lot of technology which is 
goes into it uh, as a research. So that is one aspect of the balloon, uh, if I may say, diplomacy or balloon um, uh, military diplomacy uh, or balloon military act. But then there's a bigger geopolitical message uh, which is given by China and maybe which is given by America, which I'd like to elude. From China, the message is they are intercontinental. They have the deep look capability in addition to whatever happens on ground and other systems, satellite systems. This is yet a new cog in the wheel, in the technology wheel, which will actually help them globally get what they want in terms of information from aerial uh, surveillance. And call. But from the American perspective, the, the message is that it will get shot down if it comes anywhere in the areas of interest of America. But the counter geopolitical, uh, should I say, message is uh, in China is that if America or any other country intruded with similar unmanned system, it could face a similar fate, which is a new paradigm of, if I may say, uh, military combat and diplomacy uh, somewhere in between, because this is where the shooting down has annoyed the uh, us that be in China. And, and Beijing is quite, uh, should I say, upset with what has happened. Uh, and, and a similar act could now happen in a similar way if it were South China Sea or East China Sea uh, with any kind of similar intrusions. So, so we are looking at a new geopolitical, uh, should I say, balance of power which is emerging in terms of military combat, in terms of diplomacy, a new kind of warfare may be emerging with this. So this is a, yet another area which needs to be examined and maybe... Uh, this takes me to the thought as to what then is an act of war. What is an act of war? It is getting very foggy. I mean, is it actually a physical movement like Russia did into Ukraine? Uh, because with cyber attacks, with electronic warfare, with this kind of a warfare now of unmanned systems, where are we on the definition of an act of war? Yeah, I'm sure the issue will be debated all over the world exactly what is an act of war. And especially this had not, this kind of a thing has at least not been reported earlier. If it's been done earlier, it's been done earlier. Let's see how it develops the, this new story. Okay, I have a last question from you. Uh, the future of uh, unmanned automatic metric systems in India. And if you can just keep it a little crisp, we are going a little late. Right. Now, uh, India is on the thresholds of the uh, a uh, 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 boom when it comes to drone technologies. I think right from academia, where a lot of uh, academies are coming up in schools and colleges, through till industry, various uh, form factors of drones, both rotary, fixed wing, mini helicopters, a lot of startups, a lot of industries getting into it. And today, uh, when we look at the space in India, I think. Uh, it, it's a it's a mega opportunity. Uh, if we were to believe some of the uh, reports that have been published, by 2025, it will be almost uh, uh, 20,000 uh, uh, lakh. That means about 2,000 crores worth of business that should be accruing out of this uh, uh, opportunity of drones, uh, both drones and counter drone technologies, uh, and. Uh, whether it is the agriculture space, which is a, again a huge benefactor, whether it is the healthcare space, we are here, ambulances and uh, all supply chain management uh, in the civil use is, is one end of the spectrum. The other end is in the uh, combat systems. I think um, there is a huge space now to have both unmanned and manned, and if I may say dual use, man, man manned, unmanned um, sorties that could be planned to, to create the necessary impact where the unmet system may precede the manned systems. So, uh, and if we were to look at whether it is the counterinsurgency grid, whether we look at uh, actual combat, whether we look at logistics like we talked of stockings in some of the uh, high altitude areas, I think there is a huge opportunity coming up. And uh, the beauty is every industry and every user directorate every user ministry is cognizant of this need. So therefore, in times to come, we'll not only need these birds, we'll also need those who can control them. And uh, and therefore, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity 
in times to come in India. Uh, thank you, General. Uh, thanks so much for sparing your time. And thank you, viewers. Uh, thanks for logging in. And if you want to see such interesting stories, please log in now and then. In any case, all the old stories are there available on our website.